Today we're going to look at upgrading the original Prusa i3 Mark III by Joseph Prusa made by Prusa Research. We're going to look into whether this bed wobble right here that we're seeing is an actual issue that's going to impact print quality, whether that's actually a benefit because it takes up or because it makes the bed compliant, and you know whether we can fix that by just uh, tightening the bed U-bolt itself, or whether we should be installing the Hewin upgrade kit by Vaterot, the same guys who are making these silent step stick drivers which includes you know, three of these uh, MGN12 blocks and the high precision high wind linear rails for the entire y-axis. So that's what we're gonna do today. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So I've already done a test print on this Mark III as it is. I've used this printer for many hours now. I don't know how many because I've reset the EEPROM a few times, but it's been a few dozen spools on this printer and I've never serviced it. I've never done anything to it. So the artifacts that I was seeing or that I think I'm seeing from this wobbly bed are these, you know, noise artifacts along the z-axis where it looks like the individual layers aren't really lining up. I know it's hard to show on camera, but just trust me, it's something that you can see. But then again, it's something that you can see on, on many printers that are not the Mark III, on many printers that are better constrained too. Uh, one thing that I've also noticed is here where the layers stack up, it looks like the layers aren't perfectly on top of each other, maybe with like a 5% deviation of where they sit or where they land. Not sure if that's going to improve, but that's what we're going to find out. So the way that the Prusa Mark III is holding its bed in place is with these U-bolts around the bearings. So you can see them right down here, where they're here. Um, so that's basically this aluminum subplate under the bed. And then directly to that, there's the uh, LM8Us that are being pressed against this plate into slots in here. And basically these U-bolts, where are they? I can't see them. There they are. Uh, these U-bolts just hold them in place and make sure they don't wobble around. Now, this is a totally rigid non-compliant system which means that as soon as something relaxes or for example the powder coat on this aluminum plate wears away they're gonna sit you know loose they, they're not gonna be totally snug anymore on the older Mark II, what they did, I'm not sure if this helps or hurts. So the Elmate U were just zip tied to that same slot. I think it's even the same hole pattern. And of course that makes it a bit flexible because the zip ties are just nylon. They can stretch and they're basically under spring compression. Now a few printers that I've actually been getting really good print quality out of are somewhat wobbly where it feels like the entire mechanism is just kind of gliding into place and as soon as you apply forces to it as soon as you try to move it around by hand it is going to flex but naturally without any external forces it will always fall into place it will always fall into that same position so i think that's also what's kind of happening with the bed on the mark III here so before we jump into the full conversion right here uh we're going to just try and you know tighten this one back up and see if that already improves things so with this bed all tightened up you can already see that it is a lot more rigid and if i try to move it like yeah it is it flexes but it doesn't have any slop in it it doesn't have any backlash in it so of course that is a lot more promising so let's start a second print this first one was the uh doubtful one the second one is the surprised one that i've called them i think these are the happy planters by floralistic you can find them on Prusa printers or wherever you find stls i think there are three different models that i'm printing with the exact same slicing settings this is the mark III fully upgraded to the newest firmware um, and Prusa slicer of course to the newest settings as well this is the 0.15 millimeter speed setting not the quality one which is the default one uh, because what did i say that the different differences of the stock setup versus the upgraded setup are actually most noticeable in faster printing so that's what I'm trying to do here but to be honest this is still like really good print quality it's not like this is much of a downgrade versus the regular quality mode so here's our second print to be honest it looks 
pretty much identical to the first one. Like there's there's maybe minimal improvement in that Z noise artifacting. I feel like the ringing on the Y axis is maybe a bit more noticeable on this newer one. You can see it at the edge of the nose here. Maybe that's just because the bed is now more rigid and will actually want to ring around instead of uh, you know just absorbing that energy by shifting around. But to be honest, there's there's very minimal difference. So this tightening so far, I don't think has made much of a of a measurable or noticeable print quality improvement so far. And just in case you're wondering what filament we're using here, um, I'm using Filamentum PLA. This is some sort of teal. Now I've been debating using some of the other materials, for example, this uh, Filamentum Silver or of course the Protopasta uh, TOM, though these two do have particles in it. So these will naturally look better in their print quality just because those particles and their glitter even if it's just a very slight effect, will hide some print imperfections. With the filamentum PLA, I can still be sure that it's a filament that does not have any significant diameter inconsistencies, which is also something that could be causing uh, this sort of Z ripple artifact. But with this one, I just know it's good filament, it's good stuff. So let's try and do the Y axis upgrade by Vaterot and install these high wind rails. This is actually a surprisingly simple and straightforward upgrade, simply because everything just bolts into place. The only real adapter parts that you're getting that are not just direct bolt-in upgrades are these blocks at the front and back, and these just slide in right there where the original zip-tied blocks would sit. But everything else, including the uh, MGN12 blocks, just bolt right into the original subframe. So these are the same U-bolts that we tightened before, now we're just undoing them entirely and the fascinating thing is that these blocks actually line up perfectly with these holes, so they are just straight bolt-in upgrades. I wonder if Prusa actually intended for that and changed their mind at some point. And we're like, ah, I guess Cellmate you are fine. Because with this sort of a printer setup with the aluminum frame at the bottom, it's just so simple to straight up upgrade to the proper linear rails. So with these blocks, make sure to never just remove the center assembly guide uh, without actually mounting it onto something else then. Because if you just take this out, you're most likely going to lose some of the bearing balls that are in here. For example, if I try to slide back here, yeah, there is a retainer, but they're not super secure in here. So that's why you need this mounting guide and basically you just butt that up to your proper slide and then you slide that over onto the rail. There we go. Apparently Prusa changed where the two bearings sit uh, from the Mark II to the Mark III. So on the Mark III, one bearing is on the right, on the Mark II, two bearings on the left. So if you're just looking at the Mark II to figure out, hey, which side should be the one with the two bearings, then you're going to be assembling it exactly backwards. Okay, here we go. Now, this one fits on here. Right block goes towards the front because the, the blocks have four holes, but we're only using two in this subframe. Okay, so this is all mounted now, but it's not tightened up yet. So of course this can still comply to exactly where it needs to be. Okay, so these top screws are the one that are getting tightened last. So we're gonna start with the ones at the front and at the back that mount the linear rail adaption block to the frame. And of course you always need to keep testing whether everything still runs smoothly. And if it doesn't, you can correct. Now, of course, this is a totally super rigid system. As soon as this is tightened up, there is zero compliance, zero room for inaccuracies anymore. Cool, that screw dropped out. Oh, the nut is grabbing, but it's so far down that the printed guide isn't keeping it from spinning. I'll show you right here. This is what that looks like, because it's it's tapered, you can try and tighten this up. Oh, there, there we go. And it's just gonna spin. Of course, now it works. I don't know why this needs to be tapered. I 
I feel like it would be it would be so much easier if it was just a straight slot. Third time's the charm, right? Okay, now we tighten up these. Okay, and now we get to tighten up the ones actually holding the blocks in place. And of course, if these now tighten up too much and we can't actually move the bed anymore and something starts binding, then we need to go back and loosen some things and readjust. That is fairly tight. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen these again. Oh, that doesn't do much. Maybe loosen these up front again, a bit better. You can actually feel that it's very smooth up front. Here, it's actually perfect. Then in the center here, it gets a bit tighter and then towards the end, it gets, it stays the same. So here it's good and then here it just gets tight. So let's try and readjust the rear section as well. Ah, it's not perfect. So the fact that these are the high precision, the low tolerance uh, linear rails, I don't think actually helps here because the plate you're mounting to is a powder coated plate, which in itself just adds inaccuracy. So if these are just slightly off, if there's some sort of a tilt that we're generating here, these blocks cannot comply. They don't have any slop in them. And, you know, theoretically, just one of these blocks would be enough to fully constrain this bed because each one constrains around all three rotational axes and around two translational axes, which is the Z and the, the Y direction in this case. And the only direction that it can actually slide freely is around Y. Whereas the LM8UU, these guys, they can slightly spin about Z. So these aren't perfectly rigid when it comes to, you know, these aligning to the rod. So these will slightly self-align the human rails will not. So if you just grab one of these blocks, if you grab a big one, a big rail, you could just put one single one in the very center and the bed would be maybe not totally rigid, but fully constrained. So because we have to line up three of these blocks now, each of them is a fully constrained system in itself, we're basically over constraining this bed. So in that case, we do need to make sure that it is very well lined up. Now, this is as good as it's gonna get right now. Not super happy with that. Yeah, let's just assemble it and get it back together and see how well it does. One thing I can assure you is that there is absolutely no slop or play or flexibility in this bed anymore. I was about to say, well, we should maybe push this belt back into place. Okay, and that is the upgrade done. I mean, I gotta say it does look really nice linear axes or proper linear rails always look super clean on a machine but of course because we have now messed with the bed height this looks like it's a good bit higher up actually we do need to run the entire first run calibration wizard again yes let's full reset this xy calibration okay xy axes are perpendicular congratulations that's great to hear. Now I've noted one more thing in the instructions is that while you can use Calibrate XYZ in the uh, firmware menu, you cannot use Calibrate just ZZ uh, because the bed now sits three millimeters higher. Now, of course, that also means that you're losing three millimeters of Z vertical build space. You're gaining that one centimeter in Y if you want that uh, and if you configure it that way. But yeah, that's just one thing to note about this upgrade. So the only thing left to do is to print that last happy planter. And this is the happy, happy planter. So let's check that out. And while this last test print is going, let's talk about sponsors. Don't click away yet. I, like many of you, have been somewhat disappointed by a certain security company sponsor when they were trying to sweep a security breach under the rug for one and a half years up until it came to light uh, just two days after I posted my video with them. Needless to say, I will not be working with NordVPN again. However, who I am happy to work with again is Skillshare. And yes, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you've been watching this channel, you will already know about them. They've been a sponsor for a good while and have recommended their courses about everything from videography to pizza baking. They're an online learning community for creators and of course covering everything 
from business, photography, design to animation. And one course I want to recommend today is Justin Genax and Claire Wasserman's course about going freelance, building and branding your own success. If you're an artist or a 3D artist, I think one of the best tips you can get is already right there in the intro. Don't be so precious with your, with your projects. Just keep making stuff and keep putting it out there. In Skillshare courses, you can see notes the other 7 million people on Skillshare leave on each class, talk to them in the comments and, well, not the comments of this video, but in the comments on Skillshare and even ask the host specific questions. And the best thing is you can try out Skillshare Premium for free for two months when you use the link in the description of this video. Give it a try. If you don't like it, that's okay. But if you do, it's only about 10 bucks a month after that. Thank you, Skillshare. Okay, it's a new day and I finally turned on the light in the background, but the print is done with the linear conversion kit. So that's this one. And I've already had a quick look at these. And if I'm totally honest, I actually like the first one the best that had the wobbly bed for one reason. It seems like the more rigid this bed setup becomes, the more pronounced ringing artifacts become. So this one, and if you look at the nose section here, I'm not sure how well that's going to pick up on camera. I'm just going to tilt those back and forth a bit. So maybe it's going to pick up at one angle. Um, this one is smooth at the nose mostly, but the one with the tightened up U-bolts and the one with the linear rails actually have, you know, this one not so much, but this one with the rails even more so have this ringing edge on the, on your right side here. So that's the one thing that you can see as a print quality difference. Now that artifact family with the Z noise banding sort of, I don't think that has made much of a difference, so I'm not sure where that exactly is coming from. It might be something up with the x-axis with that somehow being, you know, not constrained properly, or it might actually just be the filament itself pulling. So this might be some area for further experimentation where I add a reverse Bowden where you have a, a Teflon tube that is fixed on the like puller side so that you know, as the filament unwinds, it doesn't pull up on the extruder and you can actually see that tilt up, um, but is actually just pulling on the gears and is pushing back right there. So that might be something else to do. Here's the thing. This upgrade is 200 euros for the two human high precision rails plus the printed adapters. And, you know, I'm just not seeing what it does. Now, that doesn't mean that it is completely, absolutely useless. It's just not a, an upgrade you should be doing to a stock Mark III and where you should be expecting like marvelous print quality improvements because you're not gonna be getting those. Uh, the Mark III in itself is already a machine that is so well tuned that there's not a single, you know, tuning screw that you can turn and all of a sudden it's gonna be even better. It prints just fine as is. Where I can see coming handy is if you've got a, a pimped out Mark III that is already upgraded to the max um, and you just want those linear rails on the bed to get like the most rigid setup uh, possible. Though at that point, it would be interesting to see what a full linear rail upgrade does where you have the Z axis linear rail, the X axis as well, and the Y axis as that last piece so that you have a super constrained, super rigid printer in its entirety. Now, the print quality differences I'm seeing on these three prints may just be down to just slightly different belt tension on the printer because we did, well, uh, we did readjust the belt after we installed the human rails because that popped out. So now we have just a slightly, I don't know, looser or more tightly tensioned belt. And that is something that could be explaining uh, the increase in ringing as well. For the time being, it looks like a machine that is slightly sloppy and wobbly so that it can actually absorb that, that energy that would otherwise just be springing back and forth uh, and causing ringing could actually be a benefit to print quality. Maybe not for a super fine detail printing, but for this sort of stuff, that might actually be something good. But as always, don't just take my word for it. Um, if you're seeing reviews of upgrades or other tunes and tweaks, always consult several people because they might be having different experiences with that upgrade or with that product than I do. So even though my experience with this upgrade kit is that you should probably not get it unless your printer is totally tuned out already. I love you guys, Waterot, but I can't like universally recommend this. Um, you know, it might be something that someone wants to use. Um, I certainly wouldn't. I'm happy with the stock setup on the Mark III with the regular 8mm rods and LM80U. Those work really well and tightening up uh, the U-bolts almost had the same effect as installing the linear rail upgrade kit. 
But still, if you want to check out the upgrade kit, the link to that is in the description below. As always, thank you to all of you who are supporting this channel on Patreon, YouTube memberships, or subscribing, liking, sharing the videos. Um, thank you. And yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.